and if you know what a flute is. It is one of the most known instruments around the world. It is known by the Chinese, the Irish, the Incas, the Native Americans, and many more. It is the only known woodwind without a reed, which is the wood thing that goes on like the clarinets and the saxophones and the oboes and the bassoons. My name is Alex Sanders, and seven years ago today, I learned how to play the flute. Well, not really seven years ago today, but seven years ago, I learned how to play the flute. It took a lot of patience and motivation to learn, but I kept at it. It, it took a lot of patience. Um, and I learned so much, and I plan on learning so much more that I can as much more as I can throughout the years and probably for the rest of my life I'll continue learning. Um, I'm going to talk about three interesting facts about the flute, where it came from, the sizes of the flute, and the many different brands. Where the flute came from, there was someone that found a flute from about 5,000 years ago and it was made of bone. and. It was more of a quarter-like looking, so it was more faced vertically than it was parallel to the body. And in the 19th century, Theobald Boehm, a German flautist, made the first silver flute. He also made the oboe and clarinet in 1839. In 1847, he made the first parallel flute. In the 1870s, he also made piano and acoustic things. Um, I also want to talk about the sizes of the flute, of the different sizes that flutes come in. The five flute is the smallest flute. Um, it came around the 18th and 19th century. The, it came from the German word pfeife or pipe, the Latin word papare. It was used in the colonial period in the military bands to give commands for the soldiers, and it was also used in folk music. The concert flute is the, the most known, most used flute in the world. Um, it's used in bands, jazz bands, marching bands, ensembles, flute, choirs, and many things like that. There are three octaves, which goes from the middle C on the piano up three Cs. Some professionals can reach a fourth C, or if they have the elongated flute with a, an extra key on the foot joint, they can reach a lower B. Um, I want to talk. I also want to talk about the contrabass flute, which is one of the longest. It goes for about seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. The double contrabass flute is the last flute I want to talk about. It's 18 feet long. It is the lowest flute. It is the lowest sounding flute, so it goes below the middle C down, kind of like how in low brass they do really low stuff, like on the trumpet. Um, it is also just used in flute choirs and flute scores. There are about 80 different brands of flutes, and 12 of which are not being used anymore. Yamaha is the most known brand, and it goes from about $900 to $30,000. Um, some beginners use Yamaha, but they do use another brand that I'm going to talk about next. Um, I actually started out on a Yamaha, and I have another Yamaha now that is probably worth about $7,000, and it took all of high school to pay off. And it is, it's, a, it's a pretty reliable brand. Um, there are about 40 different types of Yamaha flutes to choose from. The Jupiter is more of a beginner flute, which is what I was talking about earlier. Most people who start playing the flute usually start out on a Jupiter, and it costs about $500 to $4,000. And there are so many different ones to choose from because it is more of a beginner flute. The Pearl brand is the most expensive. The student flute is only $650, but the professional flute, which has like the elongated foot joint with the um, the with the low B thing, yeah, it goes for about $59,000.
And I thought that the different the different brands of flutes was the most interesting thing to me. Altogether, I talked to you about three different things: the where it came from, the sizes, the brands, er, and the brands. Sorry. And those are only a few things to know about the flute, but there are so many different things to know about it that I could talk about, but I would probably run out of time.